Namah Shivaya students. Now let's start with the play If I Were You. Before moving into the, in, the play, we see here a thing written as scene. So it is actually the setting of the play. Now what is the setting of a play? The setting of a play, you can say it's the entire surrounding of the scene or the backdrop or the mood for a story. It said it gives you the idea where the play is taking place, what are the props or the things kept around and where is the place. So let's start with it first. A small cottage interior. There is an entrance back right which may be curtained. Another door to the left must be a practical door. The furniture is simple consisting of a small table towards the left, a chair or two and a divan rather upstage on the right. On the table is a telephone. When the curtain rises, Gerard is standing by the table making a phone call. He is a medium height and wearing horn rimmed glasses. He is dressed in a lounge suit and a great coat. His voice is cultured. So see what a setting provides you with. A setting provides you with the idea of the place where the play or the scene is taking place. It also introduces you with the character as well as the beginning scene or the beginning of the play. So the play is set in a small cottage. The room has an entrance on the right hand side with a curtain on it. There is another door to the left side of the room which is in use. The room has simple furniture, a small table to the left, a chair or two and a small bed on the right side of the room. On the table, a telephone is kept. As the curtain on the stage is rolled up, Gerard is found standing by the table making a phone call. He is of medium height and is wearing spectacles that are in the shape of horns. He is wearing a lounge suit and a great coat. His voice indicates that he is cultured and well educated. So we get a brief idea about our protagonist. See it is written also the curtain of the stage. It means what? It is to be staged or the play is to be enacted on a stage and what will be the setup of the stage it is what it is given as in the setting or the scene that you read gerard well tell him to phone up directly i must know yes i expect i'll sit up sit i'll be still be here but you mustn't count on that in about 10 minutes time right oh goodbye he puts down the phone and goes to the divan on the left where there is a travelling bag and starts packing. Whilst he is thus engaged, another man, similar in build to Gerard, enters from the right silently, revolver in hand. He is flashly, flashily dressed in an overcoat and a soft hat. He bumps accidentally against the table and at that and at the sound, Gerard turns quickly. Gerard is speaking on the phone. He says that the person should call him up directly. He adds that he would reach in 10 minutes and bids goodbye and puts the receiver back on the phone. Then he goes to the divan and starts packing the stuff in a traveling bag. While he is busy packing, another man who is similar to Gerard enters the room silently from the right side. He has a gun in one hand. He is dressed in a bright colored dress, an overcoat and a soft hat. He bumps into the table and Gerard turns around that sound. So now we are aware that there is another character in our play who bumps into our protagonist's room. That is Gerard's room. Now let's see what happens next. Gerard, pleasantly, that is the way he is speaking. Why, this is a surprise, Mr. Uh, intruder. I'm glad you're pleased to see me. I don't think you will be pleased for long. Put those paws up. 
Gerald. This is all very melodramatic. Not very original, perhaps, but uh, intruder. Trying to be calm and a uh, Gerard. Nonchalant is your word, I think. Intruder. Thanks a lot. You'll soon stop being smart. I'll make you crawl. I want to know a few things, see? Gerard. Speaks pleasantly to the stranger and says that he is surprised to see him. The intruder says that he is glad to find Gerard happy to see him. He adds that Gerard won't remain happy when he comes to know of his intentions. The intruder asks Gerard to raise his hands. Gerard finds the intruder's behavior to be dramatic and not very natural. The intruder says that he is trying to be composed and he is short of words to complete the sentence now to which Gerard adds that he wants to say that he is trying to be calm and non-challenged that is not to show anxiety or enthusiasm. The intruder thanks Gerard for completing the sentence and says that soon he will stop acting smart. He adds that he will torture him and make him crawl. Gerard, anything you like? I know all the answers, but before we begin, I should like to change my position. You may be comfortable, but I am not. Sit down, intruder. Sit down there and no funny business. Motions to a chair and sit, seats himself on the divan by the back. Now then, we'll have a nice little talk about yourself. Gerard, at last a sympathetic audience... I'll tell you the story of my life, how as a child I was stolen by the gypsies and why at the age of 32 I find myself in my lonely Essex cottage How Gerard says that the intruder could ask him anything but before that he wanted to sit comfortably. The intruder commands Gerard to sit on the chair and sit, sits on the divan himself. He wants to talk about the two of them. Gerard says that finally he has a person who is concerned about him and wants to know about his past. He adds that he would tell him about his life, how as a child he was stolen by a group of nomads and why at the age of 32 years he was living alone at this small cottage in Essex. By saying this he developed an air of suspense around him. Intruder, keep it to yourself and just answer my questions. You live here alone? Well, do you? Gerard, I'm sorry. I thought you were telling me, not asking me. A question of inflection. Your voice is unfamiliar. Intruder, with emphasis. Do you live here alone? Gerard, and if I do answer, uh, if I don't answer, The intruder was not intrigued by Gerard's words. He wanted answer to his set of questions and didn't want to hear to what Gerard had to say. He asked if Gerard lived there alone. Gerard says that the way in which the intruder spoke made him feel that he was telling him that he lived alone rather than asking him if he did live alone. He added that the intruder's voice was not familiar to imply that he wanted to know about him. The intruder repeated his question with emphasis and asked Gerard if he lived there alone. Gerard asked what would the intruder do if he did not answer his question. Intruder, you have got enough sense not to want to get hurt. Gerard, I think good sense is shown more in the ability to avoid pain than in the mere desire to do so. What do you think, Mr. Uh, intruder? Never mind my name. I think yours better, Mr. Gerard. What are your Christian names? Gerard, Vincent Charles. Intruder, do you run a car? The intruder warned Gerard that if he did not want any harm, then he should obey his orders. 
Gerard spoke intelligently and replied that his good sense reflection reflected in his ability to avoid pain than the mere desire to avoid it. He asked the intruder about his opinion and addressed him as Mr. Er uh, to indicate that he wanted to know his name. The intruder replied that he need not know his name and on the other hand asked Gerard his Christian name, that is the name he was given when he was baptized in the church. Gerard replied that his Christian name was Vincent Charles. The intruder's next question was if Gerard had a car. Gerard, no. So we see Gerard replied negatively. Next, intruder, that's a lie. You are not dealing with a fool. I am as smart as you and smarter. And I know you run a car. Better be careful, wise guy. Gerard, are you American or is that merely a clever imitation? Intruder, listen, this gun's no toy. I can hurt you without killing you and still get my answers. Gerard, of course, if you put it like that, I'll be glad to assist you. I do possess a car and it's in the garage round the corner. Intruder, that's better. Do people often come out here? Gerard, very rarely. Surprisingly few people take the trouble to visit me. There's the baker and the green crosser, of course. And then there's a milkman, quite charming, but no one so interesting as yourself. Intruder, I happen to know that you never see tradespeople. The intruder said that Gerard was lying. He said that he was not foolish. He was smarter than him and knew that he had a car. He warned Gerard not to befool him. Now he addressed him with the word guy, which is an American used word. So Gerard asked the intruder if he was really an American or he was just copying the American accent by uh, addressing him as guy. The intruder got angry and said that his gun was not a toy. He could harm Gerard and still would get a reply to his questions. Gerard showed that he got scared and said that he would be happy to help the intruder. He accepted that he had a car and said that it was in the garage. Then the intruder asked whether the place was frequented by many people. Gerard replied that he rarely had any visitors. He added that few people people underwent the trouble of visiting him. Other than the baker, green crosser and the milkman, no one else bothered to visit him. The intruder said that he had come to know that Gerard did not generally meet tradespeople. So till here we see the basic conversation going between the intruder and Gerard. The intruder is collecting or rather gathering information about Gerard and the people visiting him. And Gerard, we see that he is a bit tensed and scared with the revolver, yet he is trying to keep himself calm and composed and is also uh, answering the questions of the intruder with a little bit wit induced to that. In the next videos, we will be seeing what is the further conversation that these two people go on with? Thank you. Om Namah Shivaya.